Amen. Thankful for what God's doing. Amen. Amen. Hope that you uh, have had an awesome week. Looking forward to a new year. Looking forward to 2016. Uh, had a great 2015. We're so thankful for what God did and what He's going to do. And, uh, <clears throat> as we come together today, I do want to tell you uh, there's a, a store called Christ Like. It's been in existence now for, I guess, uh, four years, I guess. Uh, Triangle Town Center, and, uh, and so when we went Black Friday shopping this year, I got mine, and it says, uh, religion sets rules, Jesus sets free, and so I uh, told the guy, I said, hey man, I appreciate what you do, I appreciate you're right here in the middle of a mall, and could be saying anything and doing anything, and what drew me to attention to it was a shirt that actually Seth had, and it says on the, on the shirt at the top, it says, Jesus is nowhere. And then it says, or God is nowhere. That's what it says. God is nowhere. And then it says underneath that, read it again. And it's all together. And when you read it again, it says, God is now here. Same word, same letter, same everything in there. But I said, hold on a minute. How could you be a Christian store and put a shirt up that said, God is nowhere? He was like, read it again. It says, read it again. How about follow the instructions? And I was like, okay. So I went out there and read it again. And I was like, okay. So me as the judge got taught a lesson that day. And I said, I'll tell you what, bud. I said, in all honesty, I said, you got that shirt? He said, not in fat boy sizes. And uh, I said, well, what do you have in fat boy sizes? And you got that Carolina blue. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, if you'll if you give me one of those, and I said, I'll buy one of those. And I said, when, he said, we don't have them in stock. And when they come in, I'll, I'll send it to you. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll preach it when you send it to me. And he said, okay. So I bought the shirt. I think it was $18. And uh, I didn't ever get it. Didn't ever get it. He said, you'll have it seven to ten days. So he sent me a message and said, uh, uh, I don't know what happened. And I just wanted to know your shirt's here. You can come out and pick it up. And I was like, I'm driving to Raleigh. I said, I thought you were sending it to me. So he sent it to me and I got it in the mail sad yesterday. And so I'm wearing it today for that. And I do want to tell you, I don't like religion. Religion is religious people kill Jesus. Uh, that's why I'm not religious at all whatsoever. I don't believe in religion. Religion is, is not Christianity. Christianity is Christ. And Christ is at the center of Christianity. Uh, people are at the center of religion. They create a religion. And so religion is what sets rules. And, and Jesus is what sets free. Amen. And so that's why I wanted to share with you this morning. I direct your attention to the bulletin for your announcements. Uh, I'll let you know those are there. They were on the screen also. Um, don't forget tonight, if you want to be a part of it, we'd love to have you. The men's Bible study starts tonight. And uh, I actually um, will tell you that they... Uh, we're looking forward to that, looking forward to, to uh, I will not be teaching it, uh, so if you're wondering, uh, well, I don't want to come and him teach it, you don't have to, uh, you come and Tony Evans is going to teach it, and so uh, we follow along with the video study, and then we'll actually, the six week study starts tonight, run for six weeks, I know the ladies, some, some of the ladies are meeting here this afternoon at 5 o'clock, any lady that would like to come and pray, can you come and pray, it is really for the Parade of Tables Ladies Conference that's going on at the end of January the 30th. So the lady said, hey, you know, how about let us come at 5 o'clock. Y'all watch the kids, those of us that have kids. Y'all watch the kids from 5 to 6 while we come pray. We'll watch the kids for y'all during the men's Bible study from 6 to whenever y'all finish. Deal? I'm like, deal. So uh, they wanted to pray for the ladies' Bible study. And then let me, the ladies' conference is coming up to parade the tables. If you have any questions on that, I'm not a lady. I can't tell you about it. All I know is it's a parade of tables. And Crystal can tell you more about it if you want to see her about it or if you got any questions. See her, there's a sign-up sheet on the door out there on the left. Men, I've got 21 books. I understand that some people probably won't show up. That's fine, too. If they don't, that's on them. But if we won't pay anybody that would like to come, starting tonight, from all ages of, of teenagers on up, uh, and men, I know we've got several teenagers that are doing it, too. And so uh, we've got 21 right now signed up. I've got 21 books. And out of those 21 books, um, with those that are joining it, if we have more than 21 show up tonight, uh, then we will just make copies of that book until we can order your book and get your book in for you next week, okay? I will tell you this, it takes commitment, okay? So if you're a man, uh, God's challenged us, and God's challenged us in the Word of God, and we're to be the leaders of our home. Uh, as I told him in first service, I'll tell you this, uh, if, if, if it's any lady in here who is married or has a boyfriend or uh, is engaged or uh, anything like that, if you would, just slip your hand up real quick. Come on. Anybody, anybody, any ladies who married, have a boyfriend, or, or, or engaged, or something, okay, slip your hand up, okay, leave your hand up, ladies, okay, now, listen, everybody leave your hand up, you put your hand up, now, I want you to put your hand down if, and only if, if your husband was following the Lord, and doing what the Lord called him to do, biblically, going after the Lord, that you wouldn't be willing to submit to him if you wouldn't put your hand down, 
Hey, man, look around, okay? Do you see that? My wife said to me, you put them down, ladies. I don't want to get your arms tired. My wife said to me uh, several months ago, she came into our bedroom. We were talking, and we were having our Bible reading time together, and she said, I desire for you to leave me. And I was like, whoa. What? She was like, my desire is for you to lead me as my husband. My desire is for you to lead me as my spiritual leader. My desire is for you to lead me into the presence of God. My desire is for you to lead me the way God's called you to lead me. And I was like, whoa, okay. Can I tell you something, uh, men? That's your, your lady's uh, desire too. And so that's why we're starting this journey of kingdom man tonight for the next six weeks. So we want you to come be with us. We'd love to have you for that. Uh, don't forget also the um, Baptist Men's Day will be the 24th uh, this month of January. Uh, there will only be one service that day at 10.30. They elected the Baptist Men elected for it to just be one service that day. And so if you would be here that morning, we'd love to have you. Uh, we'll be having a, a special time together that day and doing what God would have us to do and letting Him lead. Amen? So uh, this morning, uh, any other announcements anyone knows of? Uh, the youth will be doing the annual uh, Valentine's Steak Dinner uh, on February the 13th. We have two uh, different times. <coughs> the first one will be at 5 o'clock. The second one will be at 7. Um, and it will be a steak, uh, baked potato, salad, uh, dessert, and then uh, your choice of drink. The youth uh, will be actually serving you at your table. Um, so uh, we look forward to it. We've had great success the past uh, several years doing it. Uh, they, will have, they do have tickets now. Um, for that, it is $15 per person, um, and um, like I said, it would be steak, baked potato, salad, and a dessert. Um, and so if you would like to support the youth and come out and uh, have a great uh, dinner, um, see one of them or see myself, and uh, we'll get you a ticket, uh, $15 each. Thank you. And also, too, also to the first youth house, they're starting back up again today uh, from 3.30 to 5.30. 30. Um, today, uh, at the youth house right across from the LNL. Uh, they'll have that this afternoon. They do have fun and games and things and all too, but it's required for a youth to stay for the uh, devotion. They will have. To, they do have devotion there. Uh, we don't believe in getting together without having the Word of God. We should have the Word of God every time. And if not, we're just a club. We don't want to be a club. We want to be a church. Amen. And so uh, that being said, just want to remind you of that. Don't forget Bible study this Wednesday night. We'd love to have you come and be with us at this Wednesday night at seven o'clock to study the Word of God as we go through to continue through the book of John. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Birthday. Anniversary. Yeah, that's right. I forgot it is anniversary. Hold on a minute. Let me see. Maybe a bunch of jewelry or anything. I'll take an anniversary. Anniversary. Okay, who gets the trophy? We'll decide that later. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm going to ask Brother Don if he would pray for us this morning. Let us pray. Our mighty eternal Father, we come to you this day and thank you for the new year that you have given us and give us the life to be here. Father, we just ask that your will be done as we go forward for the year 2016, that we will see this church grow with members and people to come and know you as your, as your personal Savior. Father, for those who are less fortunate, your mercy be upon them. Those who are sick, wherever they might be, that you will just touch their bodies to bring them back to this house to worship you. Father, we ask that you be with God as he brings the word. Much your will be done through him, Father, that we will see a new year different than what we had last year. We did have a great one, but we look forward to see this and to multiply for you and not for man. Father, we ask you to be with the gift and the giver. For what we take today was pleasing in your sight. Father, be with the choir to bring the music. Just lift them up to let us know through music we can find you as well. Father, go with us now through this day and bring us back to the appointed time. For in the blessed name of your Son, for his sake, I do pray. Amen. Amen. The children that would like to go to Children's Church be dismissed at this time. If you would stand with us and sing our offertory hymn. Hymn number 621, standing as we sing.
return. To lead us in the direction you would have us to go. To help us realize one day we can see you in, in eternity. And there will be those who may not. I pray, Father, that we want to hear today that we realize that eternity is at hand. That they will say yes before it's too late. Father, we just ask you to be bless each family here today. We just thank you that you have come out on the first Sunday of the new year. That your blessings be upon them and their families in a mighty way. Father, I ask you now to go with us through this day. And Father, bring us back at the appointed time. For it's in the name of your Son, and for his sake I do pray. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. I'm thankful for the peace of God that comes through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the only way we can have peace. Without Him, there's no peace. As we go to the Word of God this morning in the book of Acts, as we continue in Acts, I was seeking God and seeking, asking God, show me what you would have as a title to be. I want you to have your title, God, and what you would have it to be. And God, I want to follow whatever you would have me to do. Uh, let this year, God, be uh, your year in my life and in the life of our church. And God, I just pray that you would be at the forefront of everything. And, um, as I was praying about it, uh, God gave me the title poured into. And um, as we were in the first service this morning, they did a song called uh, Death Arrested. And, uh, and as the Holy Spirit fell, we had to render to it. And I will tell you that, that uh, he confirmed that. He confirmed that this was the title for it. And uh, you can't be, as Chris Wise sung a song one time, he was on American Idol, he's a Christian artist, and he sung a song called Empty Me. Uh, and he was like, in the words of the song says, Empty Me, that I might be filled with you. Um, and we got so many things going on in our lives. Uh, our lives are so busy uh, with this and that, and our lives get so full of everything else other than God. It seems like so many times we, we, we pick up God when we, when we really need it and we're broken or we're at the worst point and we're thinking, oh, what else can we do? And that's when we turn to Him. But I believe that God wants to be in our life all the time. Amen? Yeah. He wants to be the first in our life. He wants to be everything in our life. And I don't believe that God can really be everything in our life unless we pour out everything else. If our lives are, are full of everything else, there's no room for God and there's no way He can pour into us. If, you're, if, you're, if you're, your vessel is full, uh, uh, Jim, Jensen Franklin preached a message one time in, in Georgia. We were there. He preached a, a sermon and he was talking about a kind of pizza box. And he said, you know, if a, if a pizza delivery man comes to your door with this empty box, you're going to look at him like he's crazy because you want what in it? Pizza. You want, some, you want something put in it. Well, that's exactly what the Scripture tells us in the Bible that as the, as the vessels were empty, as long as the vessels were empty, and the Scripture says that there's oil kept pouring into them, didn't it? Yeah. And as the oil kept pouring and all the vessels were empty, once all the vessels were full, what happened? The oil stopped. Well, the oil is represented in the, in the, representative in the, in the Scriptures of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the Holy Spirit can't pour into us when we're full. And I believe that this Scripture this morning, as we look at this, as you'll see, this was actually after the, the, the uh, Holy Spirit shows up to the uh, Jews. And that's known, everybody knows that as the day of... Pentecost, when he shows up and the Holy Spirit falls upon the Jews and, and they receive the, the Holy Spirit and, and all of a sudden now the Holy Spirit comes and, and it falls upon the Gentiles. And the Jews, there are six Jews that were traveling with Peter and as they're traveling with Peter they look they're astonished and I can't believe I thought all this was for us. And I think a lot of times that's how the church is today. Is we think it's all for us. But I believe with all my heart that God is telling us more and more today that it's not for us, it's for everyone. It's for all. We, we started our new member Sunday school class this morning. It was awesome to see you know, uh, people share and open up and share. We, we asked everyone in there to share what God's laying on their heart. And, you know, no, forcing no one to share anything. We're just saying, hey, have you willing to wait? It's amazing to me the last two we've had and then this one, the third one today, uh, that, that God has just shown up in an awesome way. And people have shared their hearts and shared things that went on in their lives. And it, and it drew, drew them together and helped them to have relationships because... Fellowship in the church is important so that we can hold each other accountable. Amen? There's times I can tell you, I know that, that I, I told him that, you know, so many times our, our new book that we're using is called I'm a Church Member. And it was written for church members. I, I really think that so many times we, we, we get lost in the fact that we come to church and we feel an entitlement. Because we're a member of the church, we feel entitled. We'll, same thing in the body of, of Christ as a, as a as a church, we're serving God. We feel an entitlement. Well, really, our only entitlement is death. Our only entitlement that you and I have is that we're going to die. That's really all. That's what sin does. Sin represents what? Death. Jesus represents life. There's no way that we could ever go to heaven. There's no way that we could ever be delivered from our sin. There's no way that we could have paid the debt lest Jesus Christ had come. Amen? So we're totally depraved. We are total, total depravity is true in the fact that if Jesus had never existed and Jesus had never given his life on the cross, there would be no hope for us. But he did. 
And as he did, Peter, remember, Peter is not considered the, the pastor of, the, of, the, of the, the Gentiles. Who is considered the pastor of the Gentiles? Paul. But this is Peter talking. And so he's got these Jewish families and they're astonished. And this is where we're at in the scripture. And it says, even the scripture says, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon what? All who were listening to the message. You don't come to church to hear the preacher talk. You don't come to church to see who else came to church. You don't come to church to see who what they're wearing or how their hair is fixed. You come to church hopefully to hear the message. Yeah. And hopefully you're not coming to hear the message from the man who's standing up there. You hope you come to hear the message from God because it said the Holy Spirit fell upon all who listened to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. I think that's so many. Just like I said, there's a church today. We're like, oh. I've heard people say, somebody get their life to the Lord and surrender their life to the Lord. And people say, well, I don't believe it's really real. Well, I thank God that salvation is not based off your feelings. Amen? Right. I've had people tell me before, I can't believe you baptized that person. Do you know how the hell it's just like they're living? Look at you. Look in the mirror. Our Sunday school book and our new members class is, you know what? We can blame the world and politics. We can blame everything else that goes on in the world. While our world's failing, it's not. It's because of us in the church that's failing. Right. And tell us in our Sunday school book, look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Because you see, when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing how dirty and rotten and nasty I am, it's pretty hard for me to see through that and see how dirty and rotten and nasty somebody else is. Amen? Right. They, they couldn't believe it. They, they, it was poured out upon them too. Because they were... Just like we are, selfish. Verse 46 says, For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. We could do a whole lesson on that right there. We're in the Baptist church preaching. We don't believe in that. I had a debate with a pastor friend of mine a couple months back. Ron was there. We were talking about it and everything. And he was like, man, I just don't believe in speaking in tongues. Okay. Well, it's okay if you don't believe it. Does speaking in tongues save anybody? It doesn't. I've had people tell me, well, because you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. That's not even scripturally based. See, you can't talk me out of my salvation because you didn't give it to me. I know why I believe what I believe. What people fall for today and why people say that is because they have no idea and they have studied this. Speaking in tongues is absolutely realistic. It's absolutely real. And the scripture says it must be interpreted. Why do we stray away from it as a Baptist church and most Baptist churches do? Why do they stray away from it? Because they're so scared of letting go and letting God. I can tell you a real example of it in our church two years ago. Well, a year ago this past November, or October, this year goes past October, you can go look at it on our website. Olive Chapel Church was here. My wife had been telling me for two years. She was like, hey, Todd, I came home for women of faith, and God spoke to me and told me I need to quit my job, and I need to go back to school for women's ministry. God's laid on my heart. He's laid on my heart to lead women. Women need to be led. They need, to, they need someone to turn to, and God's laid on my heart to do that. And I'm like, well, God didn't tell me that. Typical stupid man. Hard-headed self, no, we can't do that. No, we're not doing that. Two years, I argued. I can tell you, Miss Hope that works for the city of, of, of Sharpsburg, she walked up, and this other lady walked up, and this, this, she's probably in her 70s, stood right here. You can see it on video. She started speaking in tongues over crystal, and all of a sudden, when she walked away, Miss Hope walked up, and she interpreted everything the lady said. And I'm standing right there in front of that drum set, and this, and this lady said, God said that he will open a door and his power in the name of Jesus and, and I had to say with that, was like, what's she saying? She was saying, oh, yes, they can, oh, yes, they can, oh, yes, they can, over and over and over again. She was saying, oh, yes, they can, oh, yes, they can. He was like, I didn't know what she was saying. Oh, yes, they can. Because with God, you can do anything. And I was sitting there listening, I was like, whoa, hold on a minute. She's talking about that. And the Holy Spirit's speaking to me saying, hey. I told y'all I had talked to me, might have talked to y'all this way. He's like, hey, dummy. It's you. You're the problem. I understand you're the husband, you're supposed to be the spiritual leader, but you're the problem. It's kind of hard for us as men to hear that, isn't it? Why? Because there's a five-letter word that kills us as men. It's called pride. And it broke me. And the Holy Spirit was so thick, it broke me completely. And she said, God said the doors will be open and the chains will be broken and He's going to provide you. Do I, I'm, I'm here to live in proof to tell you it was realistic. The Bible says it's speaking in tongues and it says it must be interpreted for the church to be edified. And we're here to edify the church, which is the body of Christ, not edify ourselves. I've been in churches before where it's been totally misused. I walked and was sitting in the church one day and we were sitting there and it was a concert. And this lady was sitting there and her grandson was sitting beside her. And the grandson was acting up and needed to 
He needed to be, you know, spare the rod, beat the child with milk. That's what he needed, you know. And so next thing you know, the child was acting up, and boy, she was just all at it. And I'm not making fun, I'm just telling you what happened. So you need to know why you believe what you believe. She was like, da 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 shut up, sit down. I'm not going to tell you, da 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 Really? That's called confusion. And we don't have a God of confusion. It was not a speaking in tongues, it was a tension thing. God don't turn on and off that fast. And if you understand the sign gifts at all whatsoever in the Bible, speaking in tongues is a sign gift, is it not? And it was the least of the sign gifts. So misused today. People are scared of it because they don't even understand it. Something I read this morning, I, I, something I read this morning I wanted to share with you, I thought it was really powerful. Um, and it goes right along with this, this part here. As, a, as I took a picture of it, I thought, man, I want to remember that. Charles Spurgeon said this, if there's no visible difference between you and the world, depend on it. There's no invisible difference either. Is God physically visible to us now? Is he? No. So if there's no visible difference to the world, if we're different than they are as Christians, there's no invisible difference for God. Do you get that? Oh, that's my post on there. Oh, that's deep. Oh, that's deep. No, that's truth. And, it, and we say over and over, oh, the world's coming more, the church is becoming more like the world today. The church has been becoming more like the world. Because who's in it? People. And anytime you got people, you have pride. Anytime you got pride, you have sin. And anytime you have sin, it's a whole church full of sinners. Who need Jesus? Yeah. And it says, when they heard from them speaking in other tongues and praising God. When's the last time the community heard us praising God? But I can tell you one thing. The community knows every negative thing that goes on in the church. I promise you that. Verse 47 says, Can anyone object to their being baptized? Now that they have received the Holy Spirit as we did, just as we did. So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. We'll, we'll finish it. Afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay with him for several days. There is a religion out there today, a denomination out there today, that is, is Jesus only. One that is Pentecostal it is. Why do they believe what they believe? They take that one scripture and say, okay, you're only baptized after Jesus was baptized. Now you're only baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay, so therefore we only baptize the name of Jesus. Therefore we feel like there's only one thing, one entity, and that's Jesus himself. There's no God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. One scripture. Do you understand why so many people go to these churches? It's because they have no idea what they believe. They're following something that they don't even know themselves. I encourage you as a church not to come on Sunday morning to hear the message, but study and know the message. Because the message is God himself revealed to us through the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus existed from the very beginning of the time. Don't depend on man to tell you what you believe. Know why you believe what you believe. Why do we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Jesus was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but Christian means to be like Christ. I want to be just like him. I didn't ask to be like Peter. I don't want to ask to be like Paul. I didn't ask to be like John. I asked to be like Jesus. God, make me like your son, Jesus. And pour out your spirit into me. I needed the Father. I still need the Father. Who sent the Son. I had to have the Son. I couldn't be saved. And every day of my life, I need the Holy Spirit. That's what keeps you from acting a fool when you really want to act a fool tonight. It ain't people, oh, that's my conscience. No, it's not your conscience because your conscience is negative and nasty and dirty and rotten just like the rest of your body. It's called the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes. God bless us reading up word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask for the next few minutes you would be with us, God, and that your Holy Ghost presence would fill us with you and you alone, God. I pray, God, that you would have your will and way in our lives and the will and way in, in our thoughts today, God, that we would hear directly from you. In your son Jesus' is mighty name we pray. Amen. First is when we see the Holy Spirit continues to fall today. Okay, if the Holy Spirit fell on the, on the Jews, and now the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles, what are we? 
We're Gentiles, okay? With the Holy Spirit filling the Gentiles in, and we're Gentiles, it continues to fall today. On what? Upon all who listen to the message. Upon all. I capitalize that for a reason. Because the Holy Spirit is for everyone. It is for all people who listen to the message of God. That's what the Scripture says. Not the message of man. Not the opinion of man. You know, I can, I can debate with that pastor. I won't argue with that pastor while I believe he's speaking in tongues. I won't, I won't argue with him at all about it because it means nothing, really. Salvation is Jesus came. He was 100% God, 100% man. He lived a perfect life on this earth. He was the standard that God set for us. The scripture says we all fall short of that glorious standard, which is Jesus. Where none of us are Jesus. None of us are perfect. Amen? Amen? All right, the church, I'll say amen because none of us are perfect. We just thank you our turn. But we all fall short of that. He came. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. And Satan thought he won. Well, woo yeah, I can see him. Every time I think of that, I can see him going, yeah, I got him. I got him. Yeah, I got him. But he didn't get it. See, it was finished and the debt was finished. When Jesus said it's finished, he meant our debt was paid. It was finished for us, but God wasn't finished. God raised him from the dead. But the scripture says if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be. You don't listen to man's message. See, I can debate with that guy all we want to debate. But I'm not going to argue with him over anything but the gospel. The gospel is Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. He died. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. And he made a promise. He's coming back to take his church home. And he left the Holy Spirit here with us to guide us and direct us. I'll argue with you to the ground about that. And I can tell you why I believe it. I can show you the scripture why I believe it. Now, everything else outside of that is secondary. <laughs> I believe we should be baptized because Jesus was baptized. Yeah. We should want to be like Jesus. That's why we believe in full submersion baptism. As he came straightway up out of the water. But does baptism save us? Yeah. No. He looked at the thief on the cross beside him and said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. They didn't take him off the cross, baptize him, stick him back up there. I believe in it completely. Do I believe it should be the killer for us as a church? No. Is it today? Yes. Let's be realistic this morning. <coughs> you know what it does? It creates the attitude of people when you ask them, are you saved? They say, oh, I've been baptized. I want to ask you. Are you saved? Do you listen to the message of God? Or do you listen to the message of man? Oh, well, you can't be a part of our clique. Unless you don't been dunked under there. I believe in it completely. I was I, Three times I had somebody ask me one time, I said, don't you think that negates your actual baptism? No, I don't think it negates my baptism at all. I was eight years old and walked down the aisle like every other child in the church did because I was following every other child in the church. Did what they were doing because I was doing what everybody else was doing. The pastor asked me questions and boy, you know how to answer a question. Everybody in here knows how to answer a question, don't you? So I answered everything they said. Yes, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. I was taught that. Yes sir, yes sir. Got baptized and a bit more saved than the man in the moon. Never surrendered my life. I did it because everybody else was doing it and went through the motions of it. And thought for 27 years, I thought many times, like, oh, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. Never lived a Christian life. Thank you for the grace of God that he was so patient with me and that he was so merciful with me in giving me his grace and his mercy in my life for 27 years and said, hey, you know what? I didn't take your life for that 27 years. And able to sit on the back of a church and hear God speak and respond and say, God, I'm yours, man. I listened to his message, and the Holy Spirit fell on me and convicted me. That's what conviction is. It's called the Holy Spirit. Secondly, it still amazes people. It still amazes people. I don't look for every Sunday and go, oh, I just wish somebody could speak in tongues, boy, this Sunday. I don't know the Holy Ghost is there. If he doesn't, then the Holy Ghost ain't there. Really? Show me that in the Bible. It's not. The Holy Ghost lives inside of you and dwells inside of you. And Jesus said when he left here, I leave the Holy Ghost with you here because God promised us as his children he would never leave us nor forsake us. Okay? Well, if he's not physically here with us in physical being, the Holy Spirit has to be here with us. Do you understand that? 
That's what keeps you from going off on somebody. That's what keeps you from losing your cool. That's what keeps you from being controlled by anger. That's what keeps you from being controlled by emotions. Thank God I'm not saved because of my emotions. Amen? Because there's a whole lot of days I wake up and I'm like, I don't feel like a Christian today. There's a whole lot of times this old mind of mind and this old brain of mind thinks like it shouldn't think. Amen? Yeah. We're imperfect. Right. We're nasty, dirty, rotten sinners. And anybody who thinks they're greater than another one is definitely wrong. And it amazes people today when the Holy Spirit speaks and the Holy Spirit moves. I can tell you, I was standing right here and I was like, whoa, hold on a minute. How did that lady know what my wife been telling me for two years? Because the Holy Ghost spoke to her and she responded. Now listen, it wasn't just the Holy Ghost speaking, it was obedience from the believer that followed the Holy Ghost speaking. Yeah. Because we hear the message. It's disheartened so many times as a, as a pastor when people, people tell you, you know, Hey, and, and as a Christian, when you witness to people, when you talk to people about God, all you got to do is give up. Give up your life. See, I got desires. I want them too. I, oh, I want so bad. I, I want to be a doctor. Well, God saw fit for me to be a doctor. Otherwise, I want my PhD, not my MD. I want to be an MD. I want to be a doctor. Well, I want to have all that. Money and all that stuff and not have to worry about nothing or anything, but the love of money is the root of all what? Evil. Evil. <laughs> can I tell you this? You can have all the money you want to have. I'll take all of Jesus. Yeah. I don't need it. I remember being in church when, when, I, was, when, I, was, when I was coming up as an early Christian and, and the Holy Spirit is for all, for Jew and Gentile. Understand that. It's for all. I remember how jealous people in the church can be as I'm a new Christian and I'm walking in the doors of the church and I hear somebody come who was a deacon and I, they walk by me and as they walk by me, the pastor's wife, it was Christmas and she had got a new ring for Christmas. It was a diamond ring. He worked on his days off and every day, every day that he had off, he worked and he worked in electrical work and he saved up all his money and he bought his wife a two carat diamond for Christmas. And the guy walks by as a deacon and goes, mm, guess we paid the pastor too much. Boy, fire all hellfire flew with me. I'm a brand new Christian. This is a deacon sitting in front of me making negative comments about our pastor. I was ready to fight. Because I knew when that pastor spoke that day, that God spoke through him, and it wasn't for the pastor, it was for the God who speaks through him who saved my soul. Amen? And I looked at that guy and I said, hold on a minute. Ain't your wife got a two-carat diamond? We have hers is two and a half. So because she's a pastor's wife, she don't deserve it? Actually, she probably deserves it more than yours does. Salvation is for everyone, amen? Right. The Holy Ghost is for everyone, amen? And nobody is greater than any other. Amen. My wife said to me this year, she saw a ring she wanted. I was like, hey, you know what? Look at that thing. She was like, no, wait till our 20th anniversary. I'm thankful for my wife being as humble as she is, as sweet as she is, and as loving as she is. No, she's not all the gaudy things and all that stuff. She don't care about that. Simple girl. Thank you, God. Thank you. She ain't got to wear makeup because she's still that fine. Amen. If you got a fine wife in here, you say amen to that. If you don't, ladies, you nothing later on punch them when you get out of here. She said that to me. She said, you wouldn't wait to our 20th anniversary. You know, it just wait to that. You take my original diamond you gave me and take it out and have it set So I'm like, no, that's the person I gave it to you. And you know what? I walk into the doors of the hospital the next day of a 38-year-old man that unless God intervenes, he's dying with cancer. I believe with all my heart God's intervening. They told him it's not spread to his lymph nodes. He's getting ready to have lung surgery, have his whole upper lobe of his lung taken out. He's already had brain surgery for cancer in his brain. 38 years old. And as I got in my car to pull out, God said, you ain't guaranteed five years from now. You honor your wife. She deserves honor. She's a gift I gave to you. You do whatever you got to do to honor your wife. I was like, God, I'm not going in debt. I'm telling you to tell you this, it was for everybody. The ring she looked at was 60% off one day, and that was Thanksgiving night. And I said, okay, God, I believe in testing you. If it's really you speaking to me and telling me to go buy this ring for her, and you want me to have some debt, here I go. But God, it's going to have to be at the price they told me it was that night on Thanksgiving. 
No, that ain't too good. How many of y'all ever asked God something you thought he wasn't going to do it? Mm -hmm. just on, come on now, thank you for being honest. Yeah. We all do it. I'm like, nah, I ain't. I walked in there, a sweet little lady was sitting there. The register, I said, ma'am, at the Jewish section, I said, ma'am, how much is that range? She told me, I'm like, whew, no. She said, uh, I said, could you do me a favor? Could you ask your manager? My wife was with me that night of Thanksgiving. I couldn't buy it when she was here with me. Could you ask your manager if they would honor that price, even though I know it was only one day? She said, honey, they won't do that. I said, does it hurt to ask? All you got to do is ask that. What's the worst thing to say? No. She said, I said, I just want to honor my wife. God spoke to me today. I just really want to honor my wife. I just left the hospital with a man who's dying unless God intervenes at 38. I might not be here five years from now for our 20th anniversary. She deserves to be honored for what she is. It's my wife. It's the gift that God gave me. She said, hold on a minute. She calls and she says, yes. Yes, ma'am. She asked me. She said, yes. Yes. I would consider him that. Okay. All right. I'll let him know. She said, honey, here's the deal. Wednesday, this is Monday, she said, Wednesday is Friends and Family Day. And the Friends and Family get the same discount, 60% off, as the, as, the, as the deal for that. No, actually, they get 70% off. And they asked me if I considered you as a friend. I said, yeah, I consider him as a friend. So they told me you could buy it today at the 70% off, but you have to wait till Wednesday to pick it up because that's Friends and Family Day. I said, well, ma'am, you know what? I don't have that much on my credit card. I don't believe in that credit stuff. But I know what God spoke to me. She said, you know what, honey? It's no problem. She said, here's what they do. I can make a phone call. We'll see. She said, but also, too, they use 12 months, same as cash. No interest at all whatsoever. Praise God. Bring it up, baby. Because I knew my God had worked. You know what? You know what my wife said when she got it? I'm not going to show it to people. Because I don't want people to think anything. Baby, why do you care what people think? But all that matters is what God knows. And he gave the Holy Spirit for all people, Jew and Gentile alike. You don't make any difference what people think. People are rude. Honestly, the world is rude, is it not? Is the world not rude? It can be, can it not? And you know what? A thousand things can happen in our lives that are awesome and great, and one negative thing be said, and boy, it just sucks the life right out of us, doesn't it? I stood in the pulpit, honestly, and lied to you and told you that it doesn't bother me what people say. Yes, it does. You can't be a pastor if you don't love people. Yeah, it bothers. I try to fool myself over and over going, no, it doesn't bother me at all. What's there what people think when they say? Yeah, it does bother me what people say. And then God reminds me over and over, you know what? All I need is Him. There's a song that says, All I need is you. It's actually a Christian rap song. That's the only part I know of. Because it's a singing part. I say, all I need is you. When that comes on like that, I'm like, okay, I know that part. The rap part, you have to ask, Ron, he can tell you the word of that part and everything. Thank God I'm not in youth ministry anymore. I don't even know what these kids are listening to today, but he does. Thank God for you, Pastor, who knows what they're listening to. Amen? Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. Your kids listen to things, too. When we look down at them, your kids listen to a whole lot of things, and so did you that you shouldn't be listening to. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Salvation is for all. Filled with the Spirit. Is to be led by the Spirit. <coughs> Why did I tell you all that? that happened? What did that have to do with the message, Pastor? I tell you what it had to do with the message. The message is that God spoke to me and said, you're led by the Spirit. The Spirit said, you might not be here five years from now. Quit banking on five years. Don't make your plans for tomorrow when you got today. I just had to tell Christmas when I gave it to her Christmas. All right, baby, if God takes me home, that's one thing. You just inherit that view. But praise God, he wanted me to honor you and give it to you. So I'm trusting him that I'm going to be here another year to pay it off. I believe in him. I believe he's that powerful. Yes. I believe the Holy Spirit is for all people. And I believe to be led by the Holy Spirit is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, we're certainly not going to be led by him. Seek him for everything. The Holy Spirit leads the way. What did Jesus do? He followed through as the Holy Spirit led. You gotta understand something today. Jesus didn't want to get on the cross physically, manly. He did not want to get on the cross of God for us. Yes, he did, Pastor. No, he did not according to scripture. Scripture said Jesus paid, Jesus prayed. Did he not? Yeah. He prayed, let this cup pass from me. 
In other words, don't make me have to do this, God. But your will be done. But did he quit? No. Because Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay, in order for him to leave the Holy Ghost here with us, he had to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? The Holy Ghost had to be with him. It's all a part of him. It's so easy to explain. I don't understand how people can't get it. If you understand, in, in Jesus' baptism is one of the first place you see the Trinity. It says, as he came straightway up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him like a dove, which is the Holy Spirit, right? You got God the, God the Father that says, actually a voice from heaven came and said, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. So you got the Father speaking, the Son being baptized, and the Holy Ghost falling on him. You see a perfect picture of the Trinity there. It's not just Jesus only. So how can people believe Jesus only? Because they're following what a man teaches and what a man believes is going to listen to the message of God. Because the message of God says, there's one Father who gave His one and only Son that all might be forgiven and who left the Holy Ghost presence here with us to be led by the Holy Ghost. And you know what? It's hard for us as church people to negate somebody else's salvation if we're led by the Holy Ghost. It's hard for us as church people to be negative when we're led by the Holy Ghost. Because nothing negative comes from God. So every time I get discouraged, every time I fall, every time I do something wrong, every time I, I just think negative thoughts, or every time I allow something to happen, it is me of giving up and allowing Satan. I'm going to tell you what, if you're a man here today, and you got pride inside of you, and you're defeated by Satan, you and I both are punks. Do you understand that? And I refuse to be a punk. I'm not scared to die. I'm not scared of what God's got before me and taking me because I know He goes before me and He's with me and He stays with me through the entire time. <laughs> oh, you might say something to somebody one day and get your high end toy. Won't be the first time I have a high end toy. I promise you that. And I'll have my high end toy for Jesus. There's people that are killed for Jesus. Do you understand that? Thank God you get to sit on your cushiony pew on Sunday morning and, and, and worship. At least that's what I hope you're coming for. Jesus was led by the Spirit. We would have followed through as the Spirit leads. Finish. Finish. It's not just enough to give your life to Him. He wants you to serve Him. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in baptism, Pastor. It's biblical. Why do you believe in it? You know the most awesome time, I, the most awesome message I ever received from somebody in the church? I received it last week. Week before last, I'm sorry. I received it week before last. I got a text from someone. And I love the ones that are so encouraging and say, hey, I'm just praying for you. I just want you to know I love you. I love those. And you know what? I also love those that are negative. Because it lets me know I'm doing what God's called me to do. And it lets me know that I'm not here to please people, I'm here to please God. Yes. Said to my wife the other week, I said, why do you worry so much about what people say about you or what people are going to think? Why do you worry about what people are going to think, babe? Why do you worry about that? And I'm looking at myself in the mirror the whole time as I'm talking to her because I'm really not seeing her. I'm saying to myself, why do I worry about what people think? Because God knows my heart. The Bible says before it ever touches my lips and comes out of my mouth, he already knows my heart. People will judge you for everything you say, everything you do, but it's a judgmental world we live in. But God already knows. Why do I worry? Why do you worry about what people think when God already knows? Be baptized in the name of Jesus. The greatest, the greatest message I get was two weeks ago, a young man in our church had been visiting our church for a little while, texted me and says, how do I get saved? Whoa! Whoa! Pick up your phone and look at that text. I'm like, yes! Whoa! Yes! It's awesome! Shh! Gotta be reverent in church. Rever be reverent, being quiet. No, I hate to tell you, but the Bible says that when people get saved, the angels in heaven rejoice. Yeah. It says if we don't praise Him, the rocks will. And I refuse to allow an inanimate object to praise the Lord more than I am. Thank God 
that you're still using nasty, dirty, rotten people to, to lead people into your presence, God. I shared with him in a little, little cinder block house in a, a hunting shack in the middle of nowhere and laying in his bed. I, he's laying on his bed and I opened my Bible up and I'm sitting there sharing with him the scriptures. And I'm like, man, this is it. This is it. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. And God's glorious standard is Jesus, man. And none of us are Jesus. And everybody's imperfect. And everybody's a sinner. And everybody makes mistakes. No matter whether they've been in church 55 years or whether they've been in church 55 minutes. They're all sinners and they all deserve hell. That's what the scripture just says. Yeah. I turn over to Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You will be saved. It's a promise, dude. Nobody can take that from you because they didn't give it to you. God did Next, I turn back over to Romans 8.1, and I'm like, hey, you know what? This scripture is my life first, and I see every day I wake up in the mirror. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know what? You know why you shouldn't worry, and I shouldn't worry about what man thinks? Because they can't condemn me. You're not condemned means I'm not going to hell, and I'm not condemned by anybody at all whatsoever because I got Jesus. And even though I'm not perfect, the Jesus that lives inside of me is. That's what makes me whole. My son, do you confess him as your Lord of your life? Yes. Turned over to Matthew chapter 3 and showed him in the baptism of Jesus. I was like, this is why we believe in baptism. It's a living testimony to show people a public profession of what God's done in my life on the inside. That I'm washed away in the death, death, and, and raised to life in Jesus Christ. I am new. I am a new creature made in Christ. That's why we believe in baptism. Now, when you're ready to be baptized, son, you call me and let me know. You text me and let me know. You tell, come up to me and let me know. When you're ready to do it, you let me know. But I, I ask you to go and share it with others too, man. Don't keep it to yourself. Because the same God that saved you is the same one that saved this old dirty, rotten, nasty sinner who deserves hell too, buddy. And he is a great, awesome God. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Finally today, accept the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's all of God. If the Holy Spirit leads the way, Jesus was baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As a, as a church that believes Jesus only, because this scripture after this supersedes the scripture before this, then why don't you just go away the whole scripture? It's not biblical, is it? Does one scripture outdo another scripture? Does, it, does the scripture say anywhere in the word of God to do away with the scripture that came before it? It doesn't, does it? But for us to be a Christian means for us to be like who? Jesus Christ. And if we're like Jesus Christ, he was baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Who leads the way in your life? I hope and my prayer is that it's the Holy Ghost. I hope and my prayer is that you didn't come to hear a message from a man today. You come to hear a message from God. My hope and my prayer is that you're listening to God every day. My hope and my prayer is that you're not waiting to be fed from the pulpit. You're feeding yourself every day. The 21-day fast started today. Any of you like to join, see me after. I'll be glad to tell you all about it. We started the 21-day fast today. Goes for 21 days. And you know, people will tell you all the time, especially in, I, I was raised Baptist my whole life, and I told the people at the Ruby Theater the other day, I said, You can't say nothing about Baptist unless you're Baptist. But if you're Baptist, you can talk about us because we're us. But you better not say nothing about us. You ain't us. <coughs> that's not a really big practice that's ever been practiced in the Baptist church. Why? Because our motto has always been that we ain't eating, we ain't eating. We used to go to Oak Road, Free Will Baptist Church, and I used to tease them all the time. I told the pastor, I even tell them now, when I talked to him, I was like, hey, how are things over at the Free Meal Baptist Church? <laughs> we don't like to talk about fasting. Why? Because it means we have to give up something. It's a struggle. Let me tell you something. For a fat boy like me, it's definitely a struggle. I understand people have physical ailments and things of, 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 of uh, diabetes and all that stuff, and they can't do those things, but I promise you something, you can fast over something, you can fast food over sometime, whether it's just at breakfast, whether it's at lunch, 
whether it's at supper, sometime, and Jesus didn't fast over TV. I've had people challenge me on that as a pastor. Oh, I'm going to fast over TV. I'm going to fast over electronics. That's great. Don't get me wrong. My whole family has fasted over electronics for a whole week. Took every electronic out of every hand of the child and us alike as adults and everything too. With the exception of if somebody from church contacted me, then I had to answer. And I wish I'd said, you know what? I ain't going to do that. But this is why I was saying we pay part of his church cell phone bills. So that makes you have to answer. That's what I told Linda one time. I said, like, hey, they pay me church several bill. Church pay you several bill. That makes you have to answer. <laughs> Ron said, y'all pay for this. He ain't got to answer. <laughs> Just kidding. We did that. Jesus didn't fast from electronics, though, did he? No. Did he? He didn't fast from TV, did he? No. He fasted from what? Food and drink. And you know what? That's what I want to be, like Jesus. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be like Mike. The old thing about know, like Michael Jordan. I don't want to, everyone, everyone wants to be like Mike. No, I don't. I want to be like Jesus. Mike can't save me. Jesus did. And I want to be led by the Spirit, following God, who is my Father, living like Jesus, and being led by the Spirit into the almighty presence of the Father Himself, so that when I stand before Him one day, I can say, Here I am, God. I know you're going to judge me for some of the things I didn't do in my life and some of the things I did in my life and opportunities that I didn't take. But I welcome home my good and faithful servant. That's what I'm ready to hear. Not I just skate through. Not I just slip through the crack. I'm going to serve him with everything I got. I hope that's your prayer. Why? Well, because the Holy Spirit continues to fall on those who are listening to the message of God. If you came today to listen to my message, it ain't falling on me. Oh, you're judging me. No, I'm not judging. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. The Holy Ghost's presence and the Holy Ghost fell on those that would listen to the message of God, not to the message of man. The Holy Spirit's for all. We're selfish people, really. Me, us, we all, we're selfish. Honest to goodness, I'll be totally honest, not one relationship, not one relationship, including my own, have I ever seen a problem with in a marriage or relationship that the word selfish is at the root of every single bit of it. Now you think about something. I ain't going to ask you to call you out on it so you don't raise your hand so you don't get in trouble later. But every one of us have had an argument at some point in time with our spouse or somebody in our family, have we not? If you look at the root of it, the root of that is because we wanted to be right so bad that we let it we cause an argument, didn't we? Why? Because we're selfish. And if the Holy Spirit is for all people, we can't live selfishly any longer. You can't live selfishly and be in the Holy Spirit. Oh, God's a selfish God, Pastor. Meaning he doesn't want to share us with anyone else. Meaning that the, that the covenant that he made with us and he promised us and the command that he gave us was that there should have no other gods before me. He's a jealous God, meaning we shouldn't serve anything else other than him. We shouldn't worship anything else other than him. But why do we get so involved in other things? Because we're human and we're selfish. Many times when we sit back and look at the situation, it's amazing to me how the Holy Spirit speaks after situations got so ugly and so out of hand. The relationships, we sit back and the Holy Spirit speaks. I can tell you, 16 years, January 21st, Chris and I have been together. 15, six, 15 years has passed, August we've been married. And, and I, I look back now, not one time in our entire marriage, because we put God at the forefront of it, not one time have we had an argument or a fuss or a tip. It might be days. But not one time has God not convicted one or both of us to come back and say, you know what, I'm sorry. We're a little worried. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's for all. The Holy Spirit convicts her. The Holy Spirit convicts me. Sometimes the Holy Spirit convicts both of us. And you know what's amazing? Is that when it convicts one, and that one, if she comes to me and says, hey, it's really not worth it, please forgive me. Or if I come to her and say that too, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit joins us both back together. <laughs> it's amazing. When we give up our selfishness for selflessness. Amen? Yeah. Jesus did it. The Holy Spirit leads the way. And we must be ready to be pulled in. Everything else in your life matters not. But God.
Please don't take the wrong message out of the Oh, he said it's okay to be a bit. Talk about me all you want to, that's fine. But know that Jesus has delivered me. Know the God who gives me the means. Know the God who reminds me of the Holy Spirit who convicted me to the honor of the wife that he gave me. And be willing to be in. That's a terrible place to be, Pastor. I know, I've been there. It's a terrible place to feel like you have nowhere else to turn and nobody else to turn to. You can't trust a soul. I promise you, in all honesty, ministry, a lot of times it's a very, 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 very lonely place. I had a pastor say to me in the church I was serving in one time, he said, you know what, don't be friends with anybody in your congregation. I can tell you today why I said it. Because if I call John up today and say, hey, John, you want to go to breakfast? And me and John at breakfast, somebody else in the church comes in and sees us, they're like, oh, he went at breakfast. John, he ain't never asked me at breakfast. It's people. As long as we have people in the church, the church is going to be in perfect. That's the truth. But as long as you and I as a body of believers and as people, individuals are seeking after Christ, seeking to be like him, seeking to be Holy Spirit led. You can't see only I am back by John to go eat because you know what? John might invite me to go eat. What's the last time you invited me to go eat? The same pastor said that to me. I walked into church the next week and I heard a lady say, yeah, he's asked, he's coming to our house to eat all the time. He don't come no more. I looked down and said, well, did you ask him to come? No, it's been a while since I asked him. Amazing, man. Amazing. <laughs> Within six months of him telling me that, God called me to ministry. I can tell you there's been times I didn't even trust my own family. Honestly. God never promised it to be empty. He promised you if you would empty yourself, he would pour into you. I am to die to myself daily. And the scripture says to let every day me to decrease and you to increase. If I'm to decrease and God's to increase, that means i got to eventually be completely empty so that I'm full of God. Yeah. And I can't be completely full of the Holy Spirit. And he's not going to pour into me. But it's only as much as I'm going to empty myself and want to be poured in with him. My prayer for you and I today is this. As a church for 2016, is we're to be willing to be poured into. Yeah. <clears throat> so that the blessings of God can pour out of us. What the Bible study says that the meaning of starting tonight, Tony Evans says this. He said, you know what? You might be fruitful, but you're not free. You might be going through the motions of going to church. And you might produce some fruit, but you're not free until you are fully surrendered to God. Being a kingdom man. Ladies, you too. Until you're fully in, you can't be fully full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right. As you stand to your feet, we sing a new invitation. Hymn number 282, Living for Jesus. Hymn number 282, as you sing this morning, the altar's open if you'd like to pray. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never surrendered your life. I'll be glad to share with you the scripture how you can know it. You can have the peace that only comes from God. Maybe you're here today and you just have something really heavy and burden on your heart and you just want to be prayed over. I'll be glad to pray with you. Others in the church will be glad to pray with you. Maybe you're here today and you just want to pray for you. The offer's over for you. Somebody comes up to you and taps you and says, hey, somebody pray for you about and you don't want them to pray with them, just raise your hand and I promise you they won't be offended. Right there you see. We serve an omnipresent God, amen? He's everywhere. Right there you see crowd in this room.
Men's Bible Study. If you'd like to be, uh, please be here tonight at 6. If you are bringing book money, uh, don't give it to this morning. Bring it tonight. Uh, the books are $12.99 plus tax, so $13.75 should cover it. And uh, if you're making a check out, make it to the church and put it in the bottom memo section, the Men's Bible Study book. Uh, if you make it to bring your cash, please bring the exact amount because I promise you I don't handle the money and I'm not going to keep the money. I'm going to put it straight in the envelope and give it to them and I don't have money to change to give you. So uh, when you pull out my wallet, I don't have to carry cash because if I get hit in the head, I can cancel that credit card. I can't cancel that cash. Amen. Uh, also, too, I want to thank you for your prayers for Matthew Prison. I didn't want to call him out first service, embarrassing, but uh, he, was, he was in the hospital this week and had some heart issues and things. And actually, my wife has the exact same thing he had. And, and uh, so pray for him if you would. He's got some decisions to make uh, in the days ahead and things too. But uh, our God is the on time, all the time, every time, God. Amen. And I'm thankful for what he's doing, thankful for what he's done. Thank you for your prayers for that. I know it went out. Uh, if you're on the IRS on the prayer list, it went out kind of late. But you know what? Uh, if you don't want to be interrupted, turn your phone off when you go to bed. And then you can get up the next one when you get up. But we want to ask everybody to pray when it's time to pray. Uh, I did have his permission to send out an IRS from that. And uh, thank God for what he's doing in his life. Thank God for him being, being able to be here this morning. Uh, we take life for granted so many times. And no matter how old or how young we are, people die even at his early ages. And I think we've seen that even this week with the one-year-old baby at Chapel Hill uh, that was shot. Uh, we live in a cynical world and we live in a sinful world. And uh, just we need to pray each and every day. I believe with all my heart that that baby's in heaven today. And uh, people say what the scripture said. No, the scripture actually says that when David came out of the morning, he said, I can never go be with my, and my son can never come back to be with me, but I can always go be with him. That's why I do believe that all children before they reach the age of accountability go to heaven. And I, I think that with all my heart. We was not have, he would not be a just God if that didn't happen. And so I can promise you that God is the best parent that they could ever be, as sad as he is for that family. I can't imagine what the family's going through. But you know what? They need love and they need support just like we do. So I ask you to be a prayer for that too. But understand we're not guaranteed the next five minutes. None of us, no matter how old or young we are. And I'm thankful for the life that God's given us right now that we can go out and reach people to. Amen. Thanks, Brother Jonathan.